Today marks the day of one of mankind's greatest accomplishments. For today, we reach for the stars. The worlds beyond are within our grasp. All we must do is reach out. Opening words of the Deep Space Explorer Mission commencement speech given by Gavin Hawthorne, President of the UESF, circa 2100. Kelra was tired. Then again, she was always tired. She hadn't been able to get a restful sleep since the dreams started. Those awful, haunted dreams. But she didn't really want to think about that right now. She had work to do. She pushed the curl of deep red hair behind her ear. It always seemed to pull itself out of where she had tied it back. She looked down at her hands that were stained red, and then continued digging in the dirt. Her sister Maine was kneeling as well nearby, and digging next to the large roak tree. Maine was slightly taller than Kelra, despite being two years younger. It was hard for her to believe that her little sister was already 18. She had become a beautiful young woman, with her long jet black hair. She wore the same drab gray tunic that Kelra herself wore, but she already filled it out much better. Kelra always hated the way such plain clothes looked on herself, but for Maine, the dull coloring and simple style brought such contrast and made her tan skin and blue eyes stand out so much more. Kelra couldn't help but feel jealous of her. She was happy with her life, though, as simple and boring as it may sometimes be. Wake up, cook the morning meal for her, her sister, and her parents, go out into the woods with their dire boar, the large brown animal that seemed far too muscular for its round body and docile nature, to look for Mycel, a strange fungal network that grew under the ground and could be dried and made into flour for their food string for their clothes, and a plethora of other things. It was tedious work, but necessary. Then she would go home and help make flour, eat the evening meal, have a few hours of free time, then sleep and repeat. Their town was relatively small, but so were most of the towns here. She had heard rumors of bigger towns they called cities across the jungles, where multitudes of people gathered, and built homes in the ancient ruins. But she doubted that. Everyone knew the ruins were cursed by the gods. She also couldn't imagine that many people in one place to begin with. The priests of the new gods warned that these cities were what brought destruction to begin with and scattered their people across the earth. But many still considered the teachings of the new gods heresy and the teachings of the old god superstition then what should they believe? Everyone had heard the stories of the old god and how they had abandoned the earth, but the new gods just felt so... wrong. A breeze blew across the dense jungle, and Kelra sat back on her heels, lifted her face into the wind, and closed her eyes. It blew that curl loose again, but she didn't care. The pure motion of the wind refreshed her. Maine just kept digging, the boar kept barking at the tree and digging into the dirt with its jagged red tusks protruding from its bottom lip, so she would probably find something there eventually. Mycel often liked to be near other plants, feeding off their nutrients, but also somehow strengthening the plant itself. The fungus had an odd symbiotic relationship with nearly all life on Earth. It was more nutritious than most other plants and even more than most meats so nearly all the fauna relied on it as a food source. And most plants relied on it to strengthen their roots in order to survive in Earth's harsh climate. The animals, in turn, spread the fungal spores, and the plants provided it with nutrients. Kelra opened her eyes and looked up through the thick overbrush. The interconnected branches of the roke trees wove a beautiful tapestry of browns, reds, and greens in intricate and detailed patterns that always surprised her. The earth was such a beautiful world, full of mysteries and wonders, yet she was rarely even allowed to leave her village lands. So she made the best of it, and found that same mystery and wonder in the small things around her. Looking up at the trees, 
she could barely make out a faint glow in the orange sky above them through the leaves. She squinted her eyes trying to make out more. It almost looked like a star, but it was only midday. She slowly stood and walked towards the clearing nearby in order to get a better look. What are you doing? Maine asked, finally looking up from the dirt. I thought I saw something in the sky. It was probably just a bird. Come on, we have work to do. Kelra ignored her and kept pushing towards the clearing. Kel... Maine said, annoyed. She sighed in frustration and then stood up herself, wiping her red hands on the loose waist apron that she wore, which had already been thoroughly stained. She tied the boar to a low branch of the rogue tree and followed Kelra to the clearing, muttering to herself under her breath. Kelra walked out into the bright green clearing, startling several small rodents that scurried through the underbrush. She breathed deeply as the wind that passed through the clearing blew gently against her face. Then she looked up, searching the sky for what she had seen before. She spotted it, that flickering white glint that looked so off in the orange midday sky. See there! She exclaimed to Maine, who had just entered the glen from the tree line. It's just a bird, she said. When was the last time you saw a bird that glowed and flickered like that? Then what exactly do you think it is, Kel? I don't know. Whatever, I'm getting back to work. As Kelra looked up at the moving object, she saw a bright flash erupt from behind it, like a thousand campfires burst to life simultaneously and then were snuffed out, leaving a bright afterimage in her mind as the object began to trail dark black smoke behind it. Maine! What, Kel? She asked in frustration, turning around in a snap. Then she saw it too. Angels, what is that thing? It drew closer, seeming to head in the direction in front of them. Come on! Kelra took off running towards the other side of the clearing and disappeared into the tree line before Maine had a chance to object. Why are you like this? Maine asked to the air before taking off in the same direction that Kelra went. Kelra struggled to follow the line of black smoke from beneath the canopy of trees, but she could also hear it now. It sounded like a swarm storm of manti as they wreaked havoc across the land, a disconcerting buzzing and rumbling broken up by occasional jarring explosions that sounded like cracks of lightning. What was that thing? Images of the new gods that plagued her dreams and that the priests spoke of flooded through her mind. Surely this wasn't one of them, was it? They rarely ever appeared to people, and from the stories she had heard, never in this fashion. Bewildered, she trudged through the dense jungle, leaping over logs and dodging through the dark green vines that grew down from the trees and reached towards her as she passed, hoping to tangle and trip her, as if she was some small animal that they could strangle and drain. Of course, creep vines were dangerous to people too, but only if you weren't paying any attention. The terrain began to change, trees growing further apart, and the dirt below her changed from deep red to bright orange as they neared the Mesa Plateau on the other side of the jungle that climbed into the sky. Kelra's relatively small size made navigating the jungle easy, but Maine did do a good job keeping up with her. They finally reached the beginning of the steep incline. The burning object was so close now, It screamed as it blazed directly overhead, forcing Kelra and Maine to both cover their ears. It then crested the top of the mesa and crashed in a deafening sound. It felt as if it shook the earth itself beneath their feet. They shared a nervous glance towards each other, and then pushed forward up the hill towards the unknown object.